Hello and welcome to another Leak Code video. Today we're going to be doing the problem of the day for July 15th, maximum number of events that can be attended to. And so you're given an array of events where events i, start day, end day, and value. And the ith event starts at start day, ends at end day, and if you attend this event and you receive a value, you're given an integer k, represents the number of maximum events you can attend. You can only invent, attend one event at a time, and if you choose to attend the event, you must attend the entire event. <clears throat> Note that the end of the day is inclusive. That is, you cannot attend two events where one of them starts and the other ends. Return the maximum sum of values you can achieve by attending the events. So let's go through these examples. So for example one, what events do we have? So we have event one, two, four, and then we have event three, four, three, and we have event two, three, one. So just draw these on a number line, right? So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, so event number one goes here, event number two goes here, and event number three is here, and let's write the value. So the value here is four, the value here is three, and the value here is one. So when events overlap, you can't attend both of them. And so this one is pretty straightforward, right? We want to attend this one, and we want to attend this one. We also have two events we can attend. So we're going to attend these two events and we're going to get us seven points. Okay, so let's go to the next example here. And so scroll down here. So we have event one, two, four. And we have event three, four, three. And we have two, three, ten. And we can only have ten to two of them. Okay, let's draw them on a number line again. So one two, three, four. So we have one, two, it's worth four points. Three, four, it's worth three points. And then we have two, three, it's worth 10 points. So we can attend two, but we don't have to attend two. So we're actually gonna take this event here and we're gonna attend this one and we can't attend either of these because they overlap. So we're gonna get 10 points here. We're just gonna attend the one event. And then for the first, for the last example, um, we're gonna draw it again, right? So. Actually, we're not going to draw this one, but you can see that the first event starts at one, ends with one, then two, and two, and three, and three, and four, and four, and we can attend three events. So if nothing overlaps and we can attend three events, we just pick the highest, like the, the biggest three. Okay. So we're actually going to break this down into two parts for the problem. We're going to break it down to two parts, and we're going to solve both of those, and then from there, we're going to get the intuition on how to solve this problem. Okay, so let's break it down. First of all, we need to recognize this is an intervals problem because you need to attend one thing and then it needs to finish and then you need to make sure there's no overlapping time. So this is an intervals problem. So first we're going to sort it, right? So number one, regardless, we're going to sort. Okay, so now I'm going to give you an example of some events and then we're going to figure out kind of what are, what we're doing. Okay, so let's, let's, give, let's get some events here. So we're going to have an event here, one, two, four. And we're, I'm just going to write these out in sorted order because we are going to sort them. Then we're going to have 2, 3, 1. Then we are going to have 2, 4, 8. Then we are going to have 3, 4, 3. And finally, we are going to have 4, 6, 5. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to solve two problems here. And from that, we're going to get intuition. So let's, number one, we're going to sort, okay? Now our first problem that we're actually going to actually problem is, let's say that we attend some event. So let's say we attend event over here. Well, how do we figure out in an efficient way, where is the next event we can attend? So let's say we attend here, you know, the event starts at one, it ends at two, how do we figure out, okay, what's the next event we can attend? And how are we gonna do that, right? So let me actually get another color here. Let's actually redo this and let's do this. Okay, so let's say we attend this event. This event ends at two, right? So it's start, end, and value. How do we know what to attend? Well, we could just go manually, right? So we could just say, all right, we'll attend something, we'll have an index. We'll keep going down and let's just, you know, Let's try this one. Okay, we can't attend that because they overlap, right? Because if this end if this ends at two, then the next event has to start. They can't start at two because if they're the same value, they overlap. So then we're gonna go over here. 
can't can't attend this one and we're going to go over here and this is the one that doesn't overlap so this is the one we can attend next now is there a more efficient way of doing this like let's say we just have like ten thousand events do we have to go one by one by one by one which would be o of n well there is a more efficient way of doing this right so because we have the index of where we're at like let's say this is a valid index if this is a valid index that we can't attend then we know that like this is a valid index right because anything to the right is going to be bigger or the same, right? So anything to the right is going to have this left value bigger or the same to what, what that one was. And anything to the left, like let's say this one was not allowed, then anything to the left is not going to be allowed, right? So now we're kind of getting a, we have a sorted list. We're looking at start elements and we're trying to find what's the first value, right? An even simpler problem, what's the first value greater than two, right? So value greater than two. And we can just, we have access to all these start elements. Well, and we and they're sorted. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Right? We do a binary search. So we can actually do a binary search here to get the first value, like the first valid interval we can go to. Right, pretty straightforward. That's gonna be n log n. So that's the first problem that we needed to solve. Now we have another problem. So problem number one, binary search. Pretty straightforward, right? If we have some interval in a sorted array, we can figure out where to go, okay? Problem number two, so let's call it three. How would we solve this problem? I'm actually gonna delete this stuff for now. So I'll just say two, you know, we're gonna say binary search. We have, we have that solution, right? And so we're gonna say next interval to go to. All right, so we solve that binary search, or so just call that BS. Okay, and it's gonna be n log n time. Second problem, how would we, like let's say we have, we can we can attend, let's say K, two, like two events. Let's say we can attend two events. Now, let's just get rid of the fact that these events have coordinates, and let's just change the problem to, if we can attend two events, which events do we want to attend? So ignore these coordinates. Let's so just say we have an array of values, right? So we just have an array of values like four, one, eight, three, five. How do we actually do this problem, right? So let's actually go down here. How do we actually do this problem? How, we, we can attend two events and how do, how, do, how do we do this, right? Without without doing some kind of list max, like with a dynamic programming way, because we, we can't do a list max because we have to maintain the order. So with, with maintaining the order without doing just like a list max of like the two or three biggest elements, how would you go one by one and determine which elements you actually want? Well, what choices do we have at every element, right? So let's say we're over here, what choices do we have? So we have some index, we have some index and we have a elements that we have left to take, right? And let's just draw out some base cases. So let's just say we have an index as our parameters and like, let's just call it EL, where EL is the number of elements that we have to take still, right? So let's say we're over here and what are our choices? Well, it's pretty straightforward. So let's, let's just draw like a dynamic, dynamic programming solution for this. Okay, well, so if the index It is out of bounds, right? So it's greater than, let's just say, array length or something, array length, right? Then how many elements can we take? Well, it's going to be zero. Now, same way in a dynamic programming solution, if this is cached, we can return that. But let's say, like, what choices do we have if that's not the case? If, if we aren't out of bounds and, and, and we're picking, well, it's pretty straightforward. We can either take it, right? And then our k would reduce. So then, so then our next our next location is going to be index plus one, right? Our next dp is going to be index plus one, and then the number of elements is going to be elements minus one, right? Or we can not take it. So not take, and then our next index is going to be index plus one again, right? And now our elements left to take is still elements. And so when we do take it, we're obviously going to add the value, right? So we're going to say like value plus this. And so those are our two choices. So it's kind of like a house robber problem where if you boil it down to let's just ignore, forget all the, forget all the indices, forget when it starts, when it ends. Let's just say these you just have values. Like let's break it down to the simplest version of this problem. So we can either take it or we cannot. 
and then we're going to maximize here, right? So we're going to max this this choice. So max of these two things. Okay? And so if you just have the value, it's a pretty like could you solve that problem, right? You have an array of these numbers, you can't just call like dot max or whatever. You have to go one by one. How would you do a DP version where you just get the max values? So you can literally just add every single index, you know, and cache it as well. Just either take the value or don't take the value. If you do take the value, then you have elements minus one left and otherwise you have elements. And then also another base case would be when you have no more elements left to take, you can also return zero, right? So your two base cases are you're out of bounds or you have no more elements to take. But essentially this is the dynamic programming solution for this simple problem. But how do we take this simple problem and transform it into the problem that we have, right? So we, we know how to we know how to do this part now where, where we know how to do a DP here with no with nothing. But how do we actually take these indices? So because this is sorted, essentially all we have to do, it's pretty straightforward, right? So if we don't take, so let's just go number four, right? And let's just write out some stuff. So we have a couple choices. So A, if we don't take the value index equals index plus one, right? That's pretty straightforward. So if we don't take the value, then we just go to the next index because in our intervals, if like, if we don't, if we don't take this, then we can just go to the next one and try to take that. But what if we do take this? Like, what if we say we want to take this value? Well, we can't just go to the next index because they might be overlapping, right? We have to find the next available index. And how do we find the next available index? Well, that's problem number two, right? It's, I just said, if you take an interval, how do you find the next available interval to go to? Well, it's a binary search. And so let's write that as well. So if we do take the value, binary search to next available value. And now we have pretty much everything we need to solve this problem, except we do need a couple more things. So let's go over that. So this is, this is like, we're going to do a DP of a simple, you know, like a house robber where we either like, you know, rob the house or don't rob the house. We, we try to maximize. If we do rob the house, then we have to binary search to the next available value. And if we don't rob the house, we just go to here, over here. But there is one little optimization where we do this binary search. There is an optimization because we might get to the same value and we're going to be binary searching from that value multiple times, right? Like for example, you know, let's say, let's say we take here or sorry, let's say, let's say we, you know, whatever, take here and then don't take and don't take somewhere else. And you know, you can get to the same, you can get to the same thing twice. Like, like for example, actually I can give you a better one. So, Let's say we, we would take here and then we, you know, can't take here and then we, uh, yeah, so we can't take here, we can't take here, let's say we take here. So that's one case, right? We take here, we take here, and we're going to do a binary search over here. But what about if we just go, don't take, don't take, don't take, take here. Also do a binary search. So you can see like in a big, in a big array, you're going to do the same binary search multiple times. And so not only do you want to cache this DP, you also want to cache the binary search. So cache here, and we want to cache in our actual DP. So cache here. Now that we cache our binary search and the DP, how many times would we have to binary search maximum? So it would be just be N, like the, the only place, uh, you would have N places to binary search. And so to get, to get the binary search from every single index would be N log N time, right? because we're doing n binary or every binary search takes logs n and we're doing n binary searches and we already sorted, right? That was like our first step. So this doesn't cost us anything. So we're going to have a cache of binary searches. We're going to have a cache of DPs. And now we kind of know, let's break it down one more time, right? So we're going to start at every, we're going to have an index and a number of elements left. We can either take the value, not take the value, try to maximize it. If we do take the value, we're going to buy a scenario search to the next possible location. Now you could do this binary search one of two ways. You can just binary search every single index in the beginning and just store those. And then your, every binary search is going to be all one time in your DP. Or you could, as you're calling binary search, you know, check kind of like a kind of like a DP, check if it's in the cache or not. And so that's the approach I'm going to take. But either one's fine. Okay. So now we have enough to actually solve this. So let's let's go through the solution here. And I actually have it coded. So let's take a look. So we're going to sort the events, right? Like I said, we are going to have a binary visited cache. 
as I said before. And we're going to have a visited cache, which is actually for this, for this, D, yeah, I'm sorry. The visited cache is going to be for this DP, and then the binary visited cache is going to be for the binary search. So the binary search is pretty straightforward, right? Like, let's say you visited an element. Let's say we visited this element. We just take the this value here, and, and we need the first element that has a start value of greater than this 2, right? That's what we're going to do. Because if it ends with 2, then we need the first element that has a start value that's greater than this 2, which is going to be over here. And so that's essentially what we're doing in this binary search. So we are saying, if it's already in our cache, let's just return it. We don't want to be repeating the same work. But otherwise, the end event is going to be events index at 1. We're going to pass in an index of, of like what element we actually visited. And so let's say we visited this element index at one is where it ended, right? So it, it ends at two. And then we just do a simple, you know, binary search, not going to go too much into depth about this, where we're just getting the first element that's to the right of where we visited. Pretty straightforward. And we also need to check if we do, we might not have like a valid location. And so if we don't have a valid location, like let's say we visited the last thing, we're just going to return the uh, length of events. And then we're going to go into the base case where, you know, like, like let's say we've actually visited this last thing and there's nowhere else to go. We're just going to return the length of the events, and that way when we DP to that, that's just going to return zero because there's nothing else to there's nothing else to take. So that's looks like our default case where if we don't actually have anything that we can go to. Okay, so now in our DP, so like I said, we have two things: we have an index and an events remaining, just like I showed in this picture, right? So we have index and and, and events remaining. And what we need, right, so index here, element, number of elements left, same exact thing. Okay, so if the index is greater than or equal to length of the events, that means that we are out of bounds and we can't take anything else. Or events remaining equals zero, we can't take anything else either, right? We already took all the events we could. We can return zero, that's our base case. Then once again, a normal cache, you know, if this combination is in our visited hash set, hash map, we're just going to return that. Now we try to maximize the result. So you could even write it in another way. You could just maximize between these two, essentially, right? So I just you know wrote it like this to make it uh, fit. But essentially, we can do one of two things, right? So here, what are we doing? We are taking the element. So that means this is what we're doing over here. So we're saying, OK, if we take the element, then where do we need to go to? And what value do we need? Well, the value is going to be events index 2, right? So let's say we take something here. 2 is the value. So this is the value here. And then where are we actually going? Well, we we have events remaining minus 1. We took an event. And then we're going to call binary search on the current index saying we took it and give us the next index to go to. Pretty straightforward. Now, if we didn't take it, what are we doing? Our events remaining stays the same. And we can just go to the next available index. We don't need to do the binary search there. Then we simply cache it and return it. And finally, our you know initial return case is let, let's return DP where where the number of events we have remaining is k, right? Because we have k total events, and we're going to start at index zero. So let's try to submit that. Should work. Yeah. Okay. And let's actually go through the. And by the way, so yeah, so I would recommend for hard problems when you for, when you look for solutions, look at the constraints, and those are going to give you like a big hint of w what things you can be doing. So if you see this k times events length is 10 to the 6, that means you can't really add any, you can't really add another n over here, right? Because then k could be like 10 to the 3rd, and that would be 10 to the 9th and would fail. So you either have to have a solution that uses this or maybe like this and log n or something. But OK, so let's go through the time and space complexity here. Make some space. OK, so for the time, what are we doing? So sort is n log n, where n is the length of events. That's already n log n. OK, binary search. Remember, the most binary searches we can possibly perform is going to be n log n. So we already have an n log n for the sort, so that's totally fine. And once we perform n log n binary searches, we're going to have O1 binary searches. And like this is what I meant by you could loop here, and you could perform binary searches for every index. So you could just say, you know, for every index uh, in the list, let's do a binary search. And all these will be O1 binary searches. But either way, the most binary searches we can possibly do is n log n. So that's not going to cost us anything. Now in this DP, events remaining is k, and the index is n. And so this is pretty much our, so it's actually this is our um, complexity, where it's n log n plus k to the n, because n log n is the time we need for the sort plus the binary search. But once we actually do every binary search, 
all of these binary searches are of one because we're caching them, remember? If we didn't cache them, it would be more expensive. And so if you look here, k times n, the most it can be is 10 to the 6th. And then I think the most n can be is like 10 to the 6th, I guess, technically as well, right? So, so the most this could ever be is like 10 to the 6th times log 10 to the 6th plus 10 to the 6th, essentially, which, which would pass. Okay. And so now let's think about the space. So what are we doing? And what are we storing? So for the binary searches, that's going to be O of n because we can only do that n times. So, the, you know, we only have n indices. And so if we cache that, that's going to be only n. Now for the events remaining, that's going to be k times n. And so this k times n is bigger than the n. So our total space is k times n for the cache, this cache right here, right? The, all the combinations we can have is events remaining can be up to k and index can be up to the length of the list. All right, so I think that's actually going to be it for this problem. Hopefully you liked it, and uh, hopefully I explained everything pretty well. I think I definitely did a good job of trying to break it down into base cases for you to make it a little bit easier. But uh, if you did like it, then um, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you have some comments, you know, things that can improve and things like that, please let me know in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.